So don't just slap on wrist supports. Don't just, you know, go crazy with tape. And then slowly rolling the hips under, preventing those shoulders from drifting in front of my hands. <laughs> Every day, you essentially pay your dues by doing the harder thing when it's the right thing to do. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to our YouTube channel. My name is Dave Tilly, and we have a very special collaboration episode today because so many people wanted to learn more about press handstands. My name is Dave Tilly, and if you're new to the channel or you're coming back to the channel, you're in for a great one, so buckle up. We are going to talk about how to get press handstands, how to develop these press handstands, all the way from the basic things you need all the way up to the more advanced level. And when everybody was saying in the comment section they really want to know more about press handstands, how do I get a press, how do I start, how do I work a press, I immediately thought about collaborating with one of my really good buddies, Dave Durrani, who is a super high-level gymnast on the Team USA, but also is pretty much the most advanced master handstander that I know, right? Press handstands, all sorts of handstands. He's pretty much gold standard. He is going to be popping up later in this video. Sarah put his uh, photo here. Hi, Dave. How are you? We'll see you in a little bit. But I'm going to take over first, and I'm going to chat about mobility work and some injury considerations, because I think those are very important. And then Dave is going to take over, talk about, you know, some beginner, some intermediate, and some advanced type of progressions. Let me just get some stuff out of the way first. To do a proper press handstand is actually very challenging for a variety of reasons, many of which are going to be mobility restrictions and then and or strength deficits, right? So Dave's going to talk about some strengthening and some stuff like that. I think it's very important to remember that just to start a press handstand, to get your hands on the floor and lean your body weight over is actually really challenging. And so if you're just starting out and you're frustrated or you're like, I can't even get my hands on the ground. How do I do this? What do I modify? Don't worry, we got you taken care of. We want everyone to be able to work press handstands in a safe way. I think it's always important to think about mobility demands first and screening as we've talked about in other videos and talk about what can hang somebody up. Number one thing that's gonna hang somebody up is limited wrist mobility. So right here, if you see over in this picture or you've watched someone do a handstand or you've watched them do a press, when they bend their wrist over, they need about 110 or 115 degrees of weight bearing wrist extension to get their shoulders over their hands to unweight their feet. And I think a lot of people start with some other stuff like shoulder flexibility and hips, which is important, but they neglect the fact that if you don't have wrist mobility, you can't lean your body over efficiently. In order to have good wrist mobility, you have to screen these things. We've talked about before doing a hands and knees rocking screen to see if you can get your shoulder far enough over and then seeing if you can't why? Do you have some soreness or stretch in the front? Do you have some pain in the back of your wrist? Okay, so if you do your wrist mobility screen, right, and there's two reasons you could possibly have issues. One is going to be soft tissue, right, more particularly of the flexors, pronators of the wrist. So those are right here in the front of the elbow, right in the front of the wrist as well. But as you straighten your arm out and try to lean forward, it stretches the entire front of your forearm. So if you're someone who maybe doesn't regularly stretch their wrist or does a lot of you know, barbell work or pull up work alongside silks, aerials, alongside your wrist, weight bearing stuff, you actually might be super stiff in here and need to work on foam rolling of this area using a stick, doing some regular stretches every single day. That might be a huge reason why you can't lean your body weight over in the press. Okay. The second reason you might have an issue is going to be joint mobility. If the joint itself is either very stiff or very limited from years of weight bearing or doing other stuff, or maybe you just haven't worked this before and you're new, you might feel some discomfort and some pinching in the front of your wrist here. Part of that could be that you're progressing a little bit too fast and you're not using modifications like parallettes we'll talk about. But also if you don't have the flexibility in your form or some stiffness here, you might feel some discomfort here. So if you have discomfort in the front of your wrist, I think you can do some gentle joint glides that we'll put up by here, just rocking back and forth over your wrist to show if that makes a difference. But you really wanna work with a medical provider to see about how you can take that in care of. If you have some bone bruising or irritation, you get into hot water really quick with how sore your wrist gets. You need to slowly progress your drills and your strength, which is why Dave's involved here, right? But you also need to work on daily joint mobility for your wrist. The second thing that typically comes up over here is you need to be able to fully open your shoulder angle and stack yourself completely completely with your chin tucking and your ears completely covered to get a good line in a handstand and unweight your feet. So we've extensively done other videos on shoulder mobility and also handstand mobility. So we'll put those up here, but essentially you want to make sure you have thoracic spine motion, right? And also soft tissue mobility, right? Of the lat and of the teres. So your upper back needs to be able to extend your lower neck, your cervical thoracic junction needs to be able to chin tuck to get yourself back for lower CT junction motion. And you also need really good lat, teres major and pec flexibility. And if you want to figure out how to screen those things, how to work 
work those things. We have an entire video dedicated just to that that you can check out that we'll put up here, right? But then also you wanna make sure that you have some strength of your upper back. The entire weight bearing and pressing nature of getting off your feet, the shoulder blade muscles and the deltoid muscles are extremely important to be able to get that strength. So we'll talk about that later with Dave, but if you don't have enough strength of your upper back, you gotta be doing rows, feet elevated rows, some deltoid work, some plange work, some rocking, stuff like that. So overhead motion comes from that. And then lastly, as we talked about in a video not too long ago that was very popular, we need posterior chain flexibility, right? So that goes into the actual hip joint. That can be the hamstrings. We also talked about how that could be neural tension as well. So again, if you are someone who can't even get your hands down on the ground, you can still work a press with maybe some modifications like raising your feet up, but you have to make sure you have really good hip hinging posterior gliding mobility. So maybe doing some of those quadruped rocking drills we talked about. We need true hamstring mobility by doing soft tissue and stretching work every single day, like pancake stretching, but also we talked about eccentrics. So single leg RDLs are very, very helpful to develop posterior chain mobility. Then we also talked about neural tension. If you have sometimes you're stretching with your toes up and you're rounding your back and your head, you might be tugging on your sciatic nerve. And we talked about maybe doing some neural mobilization, some glides to try to get some of that posterior chain flexibility to come along from the nerve not being so cranky. So those are the three things from a mobility point of view that you have to be thinking about. Do I have wrist mobility? Do I have overhead stacking ability? And can I actually compress myself with posterior chain flexibility that Dave will talk about a little bit more. Now I just want to talk about a couple things before Dave talks about strength and drills. But the things that I see people really commonly have problems with are wrists, their lower back and shoulders. Okay, so for the wrists, we've already covered this a little bit. Maybe you're just going a little bit too fast in your progressions or your mobility is lacking. If your mobility is lacking, you can still work presses. Maybe you just turn your hands into being neutral on parallettes or you put yourself up on a slightly hand elevated surface as Dave has taught me about to get some reduction in the compression of the front of your wrist while you work on some of that mobility. It's a great way to still work on these options. Two is that if you don't have drills that are slowly building to your ability level, and you're just going crazy with really hard drills, you're going to irritate the front of your wrist really, really fast. So don't just slap on wrist supports. Don't just, you know, go crazy with tape, work drills, work strengthening work, side to side strength work, wrist up and down strength, compression, weight bearing strength, rocking on your wrist every single day, doing some warm up drills every single day. That's really, really important to make sure your wrist don't get beat up. The lower back is another common one that I typically see. And usually it's because of this rounded or flexion nature and that compression that you have can sometimes irritate the lower back if you're not flexible enough and if you don't have consistent work. So I think the biggest thing you have to be thinking about is your daily habits. I think I see a lot of people who want to work press handstands, but they have a sedentary job. They have a seated desk job. And unfortunately, they're sitting for a long time. They sit in their car. They don't ever have that extension backwards and they bend over to do presses and a lot of compression work and it irritates their back. So I like giving people regular prone press ups throughout the day or cat camels throughout the day. But I also like really doing specific drills alongside the mobility work to work on your compression strength, as Dave will talk about, to make your back become tolerable to that kind of motion. So if your lower back is sore, you might need to find some regressions and back off a little bit, work on some of the mobility work, work on some of the strength work and compression work, but then also be aware of what you're doing in your daily life. Don't just sit for like, you know, six or seven hours a day, skip your warm up, and then start your press work. It's not going to go well. And lastly, the shoulder, the shoulder typically almost always comes down to those mobility restrictions that someone doesn't have good thoracic spine motion. They don't have really good soft tissue motion, or they don't have that upper back strength. So they irritate some of the rotator cuff tendons. If you have some irritation of those tendons, back off a little bit, do some of the mobility work, get screened by a medical provider, get some specific cuff exercises, make sure you're doing a really good warm up and a strength program to support the upper back, the deltoids and all those things in your presses. And you can slowly wean your way into some of these things. That about does it for me. I want to pass this over to Dave, who's going to give a little bit more in depth about the beginner, the intermediate and the advanced level of drills and stuff that you guys can work on. Hey everyone, my name is Dave Duranti. I am one of the co-owners of Power Monkey Fitness, and we help people understand the technical side of the gymnastics world. I was a former gymnast and I've known Dave Tilly for many, many years with our work with Power Monkey Camp. He's an incredible resource and I'm excited to be able to help out with this press the handstand segment. Now, before we get into the drills, there's one or two things I wanna mention that I find to be very important when I'm working on presses with people. The first part is understanding that breaking down a press the handstand normally is about breaking down into two components. One is focusing on the mobility side of a good press and the other is the strength side of a good press. Most people focus completely on the strength side and neglect the mobility and we wanna be making sure we have a nice balance between the two. Good mobility, good strength will allow for a nice, efficient pressing action. On the mobility side specifically, what we're gonna be looking for is a good compression. And compression has to do with the ability of getting your chest down towards your knees, basically a pancake type of an action. Now, if you can't do that for either reasons of hamstring or lower back mobility issues, it's going to prevent you from having a nice, efficient press, which will mean you'll have to rely more on your strength. And what does that mean? When you're doing a strength-heavy press, what ends up happening is you end up leaning very far forward to make up for what you don't have in the mobility side of the compression, which means that you're doing more of a planching action. Shoulders coming over the hands, getting 
even more aggressive action in that wrist angle, which can be aggravating for some people. So if you're relying more on your planching action, it means that you probably need to be spending more time on the mobility side of your press. Now we do want to balance, which means that you will be working on some planche type actions to get your shoulders strong enough to be able to utilize it efficiently with the mobility that you have. So it's going to be a balance between the two. The drills that we're going to be going over today are going to be kind of a combination between the two. Some mobility as well as some strength. We'll go through a few different sections, meaning we'll do some beginner level exercises, intermediate and advanced, and hopefully you guys will be able to get some usefulness out of some of those areas. So let's get right into it. One of the first drills I'm going to be working on here is more of a mobility drill. It's something that I need to be working on for my press to handstand. As we talked about with mobility and strength, I have a tendency to rely more on my strength rather than on my mobility. So this is actually an area that I need to be working on as well. It's going to be a pancake good morning. So most of you guys probably work on your pancakes, straddle position. Leg should be around 90 degrees. You don't want to go super wide with this one. You can if it's easy for it. Your adductors are fairly mobile, but 90 degrees is absolutely fine. Knees and feet pointed up towards the ceiling and you want to keep your back as flat as possible. I do like starting with the arms up overhead if you're capable of it, but you can start with the arms down if you're new to this and this is a little bit challenging. Now, if you're very tight in your hamstrings and lower back, this is going to be tough for you to do, but ideally what we're going to be trying to do is start to compress down, keep the eye line out in front of your feet so that you're not hunching in your back, and then slowly starting to bring that torso closer and closer down towards the ground, understanding that the way up is just as important as the way down. So I want to keep that back flat, extend those arms out in front of you and then on the way up leading with those arms back up to vertical so I don't want to see a good position on the way down and then rounding in the back on the way up keep thinking about trying to compress as much as possible keeping the knees locked out throughout each of the reps trying to get that chest closer and closer down towards the ground you'll feel the hamstrings and the lower back doing a lot of the work here keeping that position intact as you get closer towards a fully compressed position. Ideally working towards getting fully down onto the ground with that chest. I like to do about three sets of 10 reps here, nice, slow and controlled. Another area that we might be neglecting with our press the handstand is actually, do we have hip flexors and abs strong enough to be able to compress correctly? These are a really fun core exercise that I like to do. You might already be doing them if you're a gymnast, but I'll show you a couple different variations that I think will be helpful for the compression aspect of your press from the strength side. So the first one I just call these pike ups. So feet together, hands are gonna go on the sides of your legs and you're gonna be thinking about compressing as much as possible where you can actually pull the feet off the ground. So hands down on the ground, you can have your hands flat if you're a little bit more advanced or just on your fingertips if you feel like that's your starting point. And what we're going to do here again is reach out as far as we can where we can lift the feet and keep them off the ground for a full 10 reps. So off the ground. Ten reps there, good, shake it out. If you're new to this, you might feel some cramping in your quads or in your abs right away. And then we'll do a straddled variation. So again, not super wide, thinking about 90 degrees is fine. Knees and feet staying pointed up towards the ceiling. Same thing, reaching the hands out as far as you can from a compression perspective, but where you can still lift the feet off the ground and keep them off the ground for a full 10 reps. Reaching out. Ten reps there, shake them out. This is never easy, even if you're really good at compression, this is always gonna be challenging. Just keep pushing those hands out further and further, getting the chest closer down towards the ground. These are a really great exercise. I like to do about three sets of 10 reps of these at the end of each workout. It's a really good way to get that compression strength in place. Okay, next drill we're gonna be working on is going to be a strength drill. It's one that I use as a lot for warm-up purposes, but it helps understand the compression as well as trying to allow for that shoulder to do a lot of the work in terms of not falling too forward, not planching too much, trying to stay compressed. So it's a little bit of a combination of a mobility and a strength drill together. Uh, I call this a press drag or a press jump, depending on what your starting point looks like. So way to look, if you start in a nice straddle position, hands down on the ground, you can keep them as close to your feet as you need to. So hamstrings a little bit tight, you can bring the hands out a little bit further out front. And ideally what we're gonna be starting out with is a slight knee bend, a little bit of a jump, and trying to bring the feet up to where the hands are. So we're gonna try to get the hips pulled up towards the ceiling, up, and then finishing in a little bit more compressed position. So bringing those feet up to where the hands are placed. Slight jump, bringing those feet up to where the hands are. Slight jump. And ideally, as we're going through here, we're trying to prevent those shoulders from drifting forward too much. And then what we're gonna do is the exact same thing on the way back. The backward action is slightly more challenging. Do the best you can. This one, start with the hands again out in front of the feet. We'll think about getting the shoulders nice and stacked over the hands. Jump and the feet going back slightly. This is not a donkey kick, so the feet shouldn't come up very high. 
You should keep the hips high and the feet low. So again, we'll give it another try. Hands on the ground nice and firm, shoulders staying over the hands, hips staying high, pushing the feet back as you go through. Now those were both forward and back, but they were jumping. So that was the press jump variation. The press drag would be the one that's a little bit more advanced if you feel like you can do it from a strength perspective. So the pressing version, the one where you're doing the actual press drag, would be same starting position, but instead of jumping, knees will stay locked out. You'll almost feel like there's a rope tied around your waist and someone's trying to pull those hips up towards the ceiling. It'll help create a little bit more stacked position from your hands through your hips. From here, hips pulling high, come up onto your toes, and just slowly starting to peel those toes off the ground, keeping nice and compressed, finishing with those feet right in line with the hands. And then backwards, same thing, hands slightly out in front of the feet, pressing the hips high, toes off the ground, just a couple of inches with those feet off the ground, hips high, one more time. So that's basically our press jump and press drag forward and back. I like to work on maybe three to five reps back and forth for a few rounds whenever you're warming up, getting ready for your presses. Take your time with this. Don't feel like you have to get to the drag unless you're really ready for it. The jump variation is good for building your pattern from going from those hands through to a nice jumping position. Okay, next drill here is gonna take advantage of my ottoman, the way that I have set it up in here in my living room. Wood floor, which means that this is actually able to move back and forth. If you're in your gym, you can use sliders or something that you normally would use for some of your floor work where you need to be moving around. Now, a little bit of an elevation helps as a starting point here. So I like starting with my feet on the elevated surface, hands down on the ground. And what we're gonna be doing here is combining a strength drill with a compression drill. We talked about strength, we talked about mobility and compression. They need to work together. This is a drill that actually allows for both of them to work together. So part one, feet are gonna go up on the elevated surface here. Hands are gonna go down on the ground. And what we're gonna be thinking about doing is first planching. So with the planching action, you can do this on parallettes, hands out to the sides, or you can do it with your hands flat down on the ground. Now, because we're gonna be thinking about doing this with a planching, Planching action first out in front. I would recommend turning the hands out slightly so that it doesn't create too much tension on the wrist with those shoulders leaning really far in front. Now you'll notice that this won't be ideal for the secondary component. That's why the parallels might be the better use with this particular drill. Compression as well as strength together. Starting position here will be laying the feet flat, exaggerating that nice hollow position. You can see my thumbs are pointing in front. And we're gonna be thinking first about leaning forward into a nice planche lean. So lean as far forward as you can, where you can maintain a nice hollow body position with those shoulders in front. Five second hold, and then from here, compress up, bring those hips as high as possible, keeping those feet on the elevated surface, holding five seconds at that peak point, and then pulling back out to that starting point in the plank. So the way this particular drill works, you have two components. First, set up in that nice plank, lean forward into your planche lean only as far as you can go where you can maintain a nice hollow body from shoulders down through feet. And then from there, thinking about pulling the shoulders back as the feet drift forward, essentially thinking about, again, that rope pulled around your waist, like someone's even yanking you up through the ceiling, getting the hips as high towards the ceiling as possible, hips over shoulders, over hands, into that final stack position. Planch for the strength, pulling into that nice tight compression for the mobility side. Now what we're gonna be talking about with this particular drill is the benefit of using something like a parallel which would actually take some stress off of your wrists. So if your hands are flat down on the ground, and Dave mentioned this a little bit, and you have some mobility issues with getting into that extreme position, some discomfort, some issues with what's going on with that wrist with your hand down flat, especially as you start to get more planching action in place, Parallels can go a long way in alleviating some of that stress. Now, if you're a male gymnast, obviously working on parallettes and parallel bars is advantageous because you have an event that requires it. But even if you're a female gymnast, there's gonna be a lot of value in working on parallettes just to get your hands to be more comfortable if that wrist is not capable of getting into that really extreme position. So a couple of things. One, low parallettes. So I have these travel parallettes. These are fantastic. I love these from Humble Track. They're awesome. I bring these everywhere I go, but they are pretty low to the ground. So if your compression is not great, you might want something that's a little bit more elevated. Some higher parallettes, or you can do it between two chairs if you're at home. Uh, something that's gonna allow you for some room to bring your feet through. This is an area where I need to work on, but for the purposes of this particular drill, you'll get the point. What we're trying to do here, I call this a press hip raise. Now with this particular drill, we'll start in an L-sit, feet out in front. And what we're thinking about doing is basically initiating the press to handstand, trying to get the hips to rise and reach a peak point and hold that peak point position. 
whatever your peak point position is with your hips, we're gonna hold that. So again, starting in the L, raising the hips up, holding, and then coming back to your L sit. It doesn't matter to me how high you raise your hips. So even if you move just a couple of inches, that's fine, that's where we're gonna be holding. If you can raise your hips all the way to vertical, hips over shoulders over hands, awesome, you basically completed a press. But I wanna think about this as kind of a stepping stone process, going from a nice hips at starting position in L sit, and then just raising those hips angle by angle until you actually get into a position where the hips are fully vertical. Starting in that L, raising the hips. One, two, three, back out to L sit. Now, what did you see there? Not very much movement, right? I didn't really do very much. My heels basically graze the ground a little bit because my compression needs a little bit of work. These are low to the ground. So again, because they're low to the ground, it's gonna require more compression. So it's gonna require more of the ability to get those legs into your torso. So if compression is a big issue for you, start from an elevated surface. Start with between two chairs, two blocks, something that's gonna give you a little bit more height. Let's show it one more time and see if we can get just a tiny bit higher with those hips. L sit to start. Hips come up, one, two, three, back down. Now, as you saw on that one, my feet actually grazed along the ground, pulled that yoga mat up a little bit. I don't mind if your feet are actually touching the ground a little bit, as long as you're not supporting a ton of weight on the feet. You can use it for some support if you need to, depending on your setup, but really what we're thinking about is keeping that core nice and engaged. You should be feeling some engagement through your hip flexors as well as your abs, and feeling like you're just pulling those hips as high as possible. Shoulders are controlling here. What I don't wanna see is a swinging action, so you shouldn't go so fast that you end up starting to drop your hips before you hit your peak point. It should feel like it's continuing. You reach your peak point, you hold, and then you come back down with control. So really take your time with this one. Inch by inch is gonna go a long way here. So don't really feel like you need to go too aggressive and feel like you need to get those hips up too fast. Take it nice and slow. Okay, next drill is going to be a jump press. And this is something that for me is neglected a ton by people working on press to handstand. Talk about mobility, we've talked about the strength side, but building pattern within the press to handstand is critical as well. Understanding what body position you should be creating from the top down as well as the bottom up is really important so that you can actually apply them once you have the mobility and the strength. So the pattern that we're looking for with a straddle press to handstand, basically the one that we're going after here, the most basic variation. Wide straddle with the feet on the ground, hands will go down on the ground as well. As you come off the ground, we wanna to try to hit our widest straddle position possible before we start to bring the feet together. So we wanna be thinking about wide straddle, hips staying stacked over shoulders, over hands, and then from there, thinking about bringing the feet all the way together. We sometimes neglect this wide straddle and really the wider your straddle the easier the press is going to be so if that's a strength of yours use it all right try to take advantage of that nice wide straddle now the other thing with this particular drill is that the descent matters okay i'm not just working on the way up i'm thinking about slowly working my way back down in the exact same pattern so way up should look like the way back down i'll show you from this variation first from this front hands down on the ground we'll build this pattern hands on the ground nice jump touching the toes coming back to that same starting position. So I'm using the jump to get through the drill. You wanna watch from the side here. Same thing is happening. Again, keep thinking about hips staying stacked. One more. I'm using as much generation of power off the ground through that jump as I need to. Not really thinking too much of the strength here. This is just about building pattern up and down through the action. If you can build this into place, once you have the strength and mobility, you'll be able to kind of key in on how to utilize it correctly. Efficiency through the pattern is very important. Okay, another area for our press hands that we want to be working on is negatives, top down. We always think we have to be working from the bottom up, but there's a lot of benefit working from the top down. And I think it'll give us a little bit of ability to understand where our kind of weakest link is at. And we'll talk about how this is beneficial in a little bit. But the way this looks, now, if you don't have a freestanding handstand, it's absolutely okay. You can be doing these same drills up against the wall, all right? Both stomach and back have benefits for different reasons. Maybe we'll get into it. For this particular drill, I'm gonna be showing you freestanding, but understand that you potentially can do it with your back up against the wall and still get a benefit out of it. Starting in a handstand, thinking about the same pattern that we talked about from that previous pattern, jumping drill, wide straddle first. So we're gonna be as stacked in the handstand as possible, wide straddle before we start thinking about rolling the hips under and lowering back down to our starting point. We're not thinking anything up to the top of that press from the ground up. We're thinking only top down. All right. So let's take a look here. I'll do one back facing and then I'll do one from the side. So this first variation here, getting into our handstand, starting nice and stacked. And again, my shoulders are staying 
over my hands, my hips over my hands. I'm gonna start with my wide straddle, as wide as I can go. Many of you will probably be able to go wider than me. And then slowly rolling the hips under, preventing those shoulders from drifting in front of my hands. Slow, 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 controlled all the way down to the ground. Now, once you reach your max straddle point, then the strength really starts to kick in, preventing those shoulders from getting in too much of a planching action. Let's show one more time from the side. You guys will probably be able to see a little bit more of my compression, but also how I'm fighting those shoulders from going forward. So again, we'll kick back up to that starting point in the handstand. Nice line to start. Wide straddle, wide, wide, wide. Take your time. Max straddle. Then rolling the hips under, keeping those shoulders open. Slow, 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 slow. Placing the feet back down onto the ground. Is it going to be easy? Absolutely not. It takes a long time to be able to develop the strength and control to be able to get that much control, especially once you reach your wide straddle. But again, if your handstand isn't as solid, use the wall so you can start building the pattern on the descent. Negatives will go a long way in building your press. Well, that was absolutely fantastic. I think I learned already so much from Dave before this, but watching his videos again, I'm gonna go back and revisit some more drills of mine. Hopefully between myself and between Dave, that give you guys a really good explanation of, you know, starting a press handstand if you're brand new, or if you're someone who's ridiculous at press handstands like Dave, how you can keep working on advanced level drills, make it more hard, make it more fun, and keep progressing so that you have something else to work towards. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please do us a huge favor and like and subscribe, but then also share this with some friends that you have if you think it was valuable. We'd love to get the information out to more people. And also just let us know, you know, what do you like? What do you like about this video? What was helpful? What do you want clarification on? Drop it in the comments below, let us know. And then also just comment down below about what else do you want to see? Are there other skills you want Dave and I to collaborate on? We're totally open to doing some more of these kind of, you know, pass the batons back and forth to give some ideas on both perspectives. But whatever you guys find is helpful, that is what we are going to do. So hope you have a wonderful day and we'll see you in the next episode. Oh! <laughs>